All right, Jonathan. What do you think Texas hoisting the trophy? Quinn Ewers, Steve Sarkeesian on Saturday. What does a Big 12 title mean for the Texas Longhorns? Well, I think a Big 12 title would mean everything. I think this game means everything on Saturday because it's validation, right? You came into the season saying Texas has the most talent in the Big 12. Yeah. If Texas doesn't win the Big 12 championship, it's a failure. Uh, you know, all of that. But you still had to go out and play the games, right? And I think so many people were waiting for Texas to fall on their face as they've seen for the last 10 plus years, right? I can't, you know, blame people for thinking that Texas, once again, would find a way to mess it up. But yeah. you didn't, right? You went out there and you played Texas Longhorns football. You went on the road. You beat Alabama. I know that doesn't mean anything to this conversation. But, you know, that was a big, you know, uh, road block, I guess, that you had yeah. to get over. And then yeah. you beat every team that you faced in the Big 12 this year but the Oklahoma Sooners. And we can call them an SEC team for the sake of this podcast, right? So, um, you know, most people felt like Texas would be in the Big 12 championship game. Most people felt like Texas had the best chance to win it, but you had to get there. And so that means just validation, right? Validation that you are who you thought you were. You are who you set out to be in spring practices and in fall camp and every practice and every week and every game when you said this is the goal and you set out to do that, that win on Saturday means that you are who you thought you were. But a loss means you are who they thought you were, right? right and, right. and this season means absolutely nothing, right? Texas is not a program. Like, they are a program that can brag about a conference championship right now because we haven't had one in 14 years. Yeah. But obviously, that's not the ultimate goal for a blue blood program like the University of Texas, right? Steve Sarkeesian said we didn't get this far just to get this far. And although for, I would say, out of 134 programs, maybe 125, like 11 and two sounds amazing. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. 11 and two, most coaches and, and programs will sign up for that, but not at the University of Texas, especially if that last loss comes in the Big 12 championship game to an Oklahoma State team that you're favored over by double digits. So a win on Saturday means you are who you thought you were and it validates everything that you thought coming into the season and everything that you worked so hard for to make happen. A loss on Saturday means you are who they thought you were and everything that happened this season is null and void, and there's even more question marks heading yeah. into the SEC next year for the Texas Longhorns. That That's so stupid accurate because you think about where Oklahoma is right now, and they just don't care. At the end of the year, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Levy leaves, like, I don't, I don't even care. And if Texas loses this game, you bought yourself a, a one-way ticket to the Alamo Bowl again. Hooray! <laughs> the Alamo Bowl in your last season in the Big 12, and you allow Oklahoma State to represent the conference in the Cotton Bowl. And, and I just... I can't fathom what a loss would look like for Texas because I don't expect it. I don't expect it. But no matter what, I, I'm going to give it in in terms of a win here. Say Texas does win this game. This is not a conversation for Sarkeesian in the locker room, but it can be for us. The, the one-up you have over Oklahoma despite that loss going into SEC play with a Big 12 championship, we'll talk playoff in a bit, is there a feeling of Texas has now asserted its dominance over OU based on the full resume at the end of the year despite that loss in the Red River? No, I don't feel okay. that way. Um, okay. I want it. Yeah, I don't feel that way. I wanted BYU to win. Um, yeah. You know, I am a Rangers fan. I know you're a Rangers fan too. Shout out to the the 2023 World Series champions. Yeah. And I said I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm above taking the path of least resistance because I was rooting hard as hell for the Diamondbacks. You know, what yep. I'm saying over the Phillies yep. for sure. But when it came to the Texas Longhorns football team, I'm just really interested in knowing who they are, Drake. You know what yeah. I mean? I want to know what this team is made of, and I want to see this team against the one blemish on their record, right? We get to see that this Friday with Oregon and Washington, and I fully think that Oregon is going to get revenge against that Washington team this Friday. But I wanted that same thing for Texas, right? I wanted Texas to answer that one question that they had on their resume, right? And and I didn't want to leave anything up to chance, right? Was Oklahoma just better than Texas this year and beat them twice? Or did was Texas a national championship contender that had one bad game in October, not even really one bad game, one bad drive at the end where Dylan Gabriel yeah. goes, what, 75 yards in like 71 seconds or something like that. So, no, I don't think that Texas winning a Big 12 championship, it gives them the championship over Oklahoma, like just like it does the rest of the conference. Like you yeah. can say, you know, we won the Big 12, you did it, ha ha. But to say, and I think we're further along than Oklahoma as a program, but – we can't scream head to head matters. Texas can't scream head to head matters over Alabama every day and then act like head to head doesn't matter over Oklahoma, over Texas. At the end of the day, regardless of what we accomplished this year, 
Oklahoma beat us and they will have scoreboard until we face them in the Cotton Bowl next year. That doesn't mean that we didn't have a more impressive season than Oklahoma. But to say we are better or further along than Oklahoma, that's all subjective and that's all, you know, opinion and into window until we face them again in 2024. So if Texas wins this and here's where you can rattle on the Big 12 a little bit, I'll give you permission. You're leaving. Does that say anything to the SEC or is the Big 12 viewed as such a a distant conference from that league that people in the SEC are like, oh, that's cute. Welcome to the big leagues. So, you know, I think that, you know, obviously the ongoing narrative is that, you know, the Big 12 is easy and Texas isn't going to be in a rude awakening, uh, you know, when they go to the SEC next year and play teams like Vanderbilt, Mississippi State and Florida. (laughs) You know, I mean, the SEC has always just been so full of themselves. Honestly, I think. I don't think that a Big 12 championship means anything going into the SEC. The reason I say that is, and, and you know, maybe I'm just a Texas fan that'll never shut up about this. When you go into Alabama, when you go into Tuscaloosa, Alabama in week two and win that game in the fashion that you did, and not just Quinn Ewers having a nice game, not just being able to go in there and out scheme stuff with Steve Sarkeesian and yeah. throw the ball all over the yard. I really felt like, and that was a young offensive line, you know, whatever, for Alabama. I felt like Texas went in there and won that game in the trenches, right? Yeah. Especially on defense, Texas handled business in the trenches. So to me, I've already got the validation that Texas can play in the SEC because I watched them play against Alabama on the road in front of 100,000 people and win the matchup in the trenches. So, you know, maybe you can say Georgia will present a problem for Texas next year that no team in the Big 12 did this year. But like I said, am I worried about Kentucky, (laughs) you know, Vanderbilt, uh, Texas A&M? I don't want to disrespect Arkansas in front of you. You know, Florida teams like that, like the majority of the teams in the SEC, not at all, because like I said, we went into Tuscaloosa and played and matched them in the trenches. And if you can do that against Alabama, you should be able to do that against every other team in the SEC. Jonathan, before we get you out of here, let's talk college football playoff odds. They're not great, but there is a distant path somewhere there. That's coming up next right here on Locked On Big 12, Locked On Longhorns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is also where I go for added income. It is my, I, I sit on my couch, I press two buttons, things happen on a screen in an NBA game or an NFL game, and boom, money shows up in my account. With basketball season here, you can have specials. You say LeBron James and Travis Kelsey, 10 and a half point combo of three pointers made plus receptions. Bam, it hits, you win money. You can play along some of the most famous people in the world who also go on prize picks, and they offer a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured for football and basketball games. If you have a player who exits in the first half, does and return in the second, they're rebooted. Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Go to pricepicks.com forward slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. Again, price picks. It's that you go in, you put in a hundred dollars, you get a hundred dollars matched. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That is right now at Price Picks. <laughs> 